Thank you. Well, I think we're breaking its back. Hmm. I should hope so. It's gone up past eight. I should be hiring a new assistant for you as soon as I possibly can. And I mean just that. It might be just as well if I didn't leave it to you this time. I was quite satisfied. Yes, I'm sure you were. But then you and I take a different view of the seriousness of some actions. Yes, we are different, but not in the way you mean. You see, I apply the same rules to other people as I do to myself. You obviously don't. I know the difference between an employee and an employer, Mrs. Howard, which you obviously don't. Oh, for God's sake, let's stop bickering. The kids learnt a lesson. I am not bickering and I'm not arguing either. I have made my decision and I'm not about to change it. Well, you might have it changed for you if that kid goes to an industrial tribunal, which, well, she might. Then you'll know the meaning of it all. There are laws against wrongful dismissal. And how much does that little tramp know about them? Hell of a lot when I finish telling her. I think perhaps you'd better get back to work. 62, 63, 64 quid. Winning. Winning. Sell the plot in the island. Oh, God, it's, it's been a pleasure to observe your success. Like you said before, Joe, all the world loves a winner. <laughs> that old Czechoslovakian say. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you sure I can't interest you in me, dog? No, ah, no, 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 no. Hear me out. Uh, that dog, is, it's been like a son to me. Uh, if I thought he was going into good hands, like yourselves, I, I'd let him go for a nominal amount, say, 30 quid. And I could go home to Castle Connell, a happy man. But if I thought he was going to a villain, well, even if I had the money in me pocket, half me heart would be at the bedside with me old grandmother, and the other half would be over here with that four-legged canine. Now you see what I mean. Oh, I we see what you mean. And like all Czechoslovakians, you are a very convincing talker. But you're not convincing enough because we don't want a dog. No, and we don't want a dog that loses. But have you asked yourself why he lost? What was he doing up to a few yards from home? Winning. But he... Ah, but nothing. All you have to do is enter him in shorter races. He eats shorter races. Ah, well, right now, I could eat him. Oh, Joe, Joe, all we want tonight is have a good time. Yeah. And we're having one, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. Well, right then. Now, the least I can do is to see you go on having it. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the Shamrock Club? No. Well, you will before the night's out. Now, it's not half a mile from here, and it's got the best beer and the best company in the whole of the civilized world. And for doing me the honor of listening to me blathering, I'm taking you there. As my guests. Right. You're off. Come, Come on, on then. Lead the way. Any messages for Gail? I don't think so, Mrs. Howard. You know, for somebody that's had her name dragged through the mud, I hate to see it happen to somebody else. The girl's had her pleasure, Mrs. Howard. She's simply paying for it. I'm not talking about the divorce, or talking about Gail either. Suppose she goes to this tribunal, as well she might. What happens if she accuses you of being vindictive and tells why? You know, they're very funny, these legal people. Supposing she says that you sacked her because Mr. Thorley was a friend of yours. What attitude are they going to take to that? You don't know. All the papers, either. You know, they report everything at these tribunals. Not like the divorce court. You're very considerate, aren't you, Mrs. Howard? You think of everything. Yes, well, when you've lived the life I have, you've got to be. Good night, Mrs. Howard. Good night, Mrs. Matthews. Jolly tars are our men. We always are ready stay. Great good time, aren't we? One of the best. <laughs> you know, that <laughs> <a> fella. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> I wanted to sell as a dog. <laughs> How was it you want for it? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Fred will know. Hey, Fred! <laughs> Come on, my old fella. <laughs> Come on. Hey, how, how much do we give for him? 
I don't know, Alfred. <laughs> My God, it was worth it. <laughs> He's a good one. <laughs> Come on, my old pal. <laughs> Come on. Anyway, you're all right here. Great! <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll say good night, sir. And pleasant dreams. Oh, and my best respects to your sister. I'll give them to her. <laughs> God bless you, Mr. Copperfield. Hey, we've had a right good night tonight, haven't we? We have that. I'll, I'll tell you what, we're going to do it again for We are, that, my old flower. <laughs> You're right. Anyway, good night and sleep tight. And same to you, old pal. Same to you. Hey, but you won't mind, you know, Annie. Annie? Salt of the earth, Annie. Cheers. Salt of the earth. Come on, Fred. Right. Good night. Good night, Al. <laughs> good night, pal. Oh, shut up, blast it. Oh, shut up, you'll get me shot. Hey, no more howling. Oh, come on, hee <laughs> hee, get this down here. Let's take this. Do your good will, this. Hee <laughs> hee, you're a beauty. <laughs> there we are, look. There now. Are you thirsty? What have I got on top of this? Pale ale. This will quieten you down. There you are, look. <laughs> now listen, no more howling. Mrs. Walker knows you're down here, she'll give you something to howl about. Me and I'll come to think of it. I'm coming. Oh, morning, Annie. Oh, what are you doing here at eight o'clock in the morning? Oh, well, I just uh, want... Uh, is that... Uh... Have you come to see me? No, I've... Uh, I wanted a word with Fred. Yeah, that was it. I, I just... Uh, I'd just like a word with Fred. Well, I'm not sure that Fred is up and doing it yet. Oh. Oh, uh, morning, Mrs. Walker. Morning, well... Fred. I won't ask you if you slept well, because I'm quite sure you didn't with that dreadful racket that was going on all last night. Oh, oh has there been some bother? Oh, some dreadful dog was howling all last night. Seemed to be coming from the bowels of the earth. It was like the hound of the Baskerville. Baskervilles? Baskerville? I'm not quite sure I know them, Mrs. Is he that little fellow with the poor wine stain? That's making a literary illusion, Fred. It's Sherlock Holmes, isn't it? Then there was the incident of the dog in the night. But the dog didn't do anything in the night. I mean, that was the curious incident. Pardon? Mm. Oh, don't take any notice of me, love. I, I haven't slept very well myself. I've been up and down all night. We had a bit of a heavy night, me and Fred and Turry. We, we, we're going to the dog. Uh, we went to the, we went to for a night out. For a night out. Oh, well, I do hope you're not feeling as shattered as I am. Do you know, really, in my view, people who cannot control their dogs should be heavily fined. Mm. But I mustn't sidestep you from your mission. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I, I just wanted a quick word with Fred. All right, what about? Well, about, um, about the, uh, I think I'd uh, better get some aspirin. I feel a migraine coming on. Oh, entirely due to that dreadful dog. Come on, Dale. We're going to be late opening if you don't hurry up. I don't think I'll go to work today, Elsie. Why, well, you're not poorly, are you? No, it's not that. It's just ever since Sylvia sat me, I could feel her eyes on me, following me. Oh, about. get away. Anyway, she won't be in this morning. She never does come in half day. She does sometimes. Well, she won't this morning because she told me so last night. Now, do come on and book up. Well, what's the point when I'm working me nose? I finish on Saturday anyway, so why bother? I have an idea that she won't be finishing on Saturday. See, I gave Madam some food for thought, and I think by the time she's chewed it over, well, uh, I think you get your job back. What exactly did you say? Well, I just pointed out that if you did go to one of these industrial tribunals, you had a very good case. Also, my, people might think that it's just rivalry because she sacked you over Roy Thornley. Did she say? Oh, it wasn't what she said. It was the old-fashioned look she gave me. She knows what it's all about. Yeah, but I won't go to no tribunal. I'll not have my private life dragged out and stared at. Job or no job? Well, she's not to know that, is she? I mean, she might be hard, but she's not stupid. She's not going to sack you if it's causing any trouble for her. You see... 
I don't know why you keep going to all this trouble for me. No, neither do I, considering there's a sink full of washing up there that you should have done last night because it was your turn. Yeah. Tile off. Now then, yours were a pint, weren't yeah. it? Mine were off. Yeah, well, I'll be with you as soon as I can, Albert. Bed, dear, we should need some more gin before lunchtime is over. Could you bring a bottle out for the cellar? Mrs. Walker, I've only got one pair of hands and the same goes for my feet. And Albert Tatlock's glaring at me. Now, can't you just go for once? Well, I suppose I must. It appears as if I bear the brunt when Elizabeth's away. Makes one wonder why one employs stuff in any case. Something from the cellar, Mrs. Walker? Gin, as a matter of fact. Let me get it. You know what we said about you trips and up and down them cellar steps. After all, it, it is my job. That is Fred's strong point, you see, Bet. He is so very willing. And so am I, Mrs. Walker. Ready, willing and able. But I have not got magical powers. I cannot be everywhere at once. No, well, you haven't been round to me yet for a I start. I am coming to you now, Albert. Please don't raise your voice. My migraine is managing very well without your decibels. Yes, dear. Off to the hospital. No, just on the way home, as a matter of fact. Lunch break. That's why I popped in. I know Ernest wouldn't have had time to make anything this morning, so I thought perhaps two of your pies. Second kidney or meat and potato? One of each, I think. Isn't it a rush? Rush? Should be the idea with us. Oh, I've had the terrific scramble myself this morning. I only have an hour, you see, which doesn't leave enough time to cook anything. And Ernest will have been busy job hunting. No, not yet. Not yet, no. I am sure, with a man of Ernest's calibre, it is only a matter of time. The tide will turn. Well, that's what I keep telling him. Though I'm not as sure as I was that it's true. Darkest hour, dear, before the dawn. Yes. How are things at the hospital? Exacting, I suppose. Well, it is hard work, but it's rather inspiring, too, when you see some of the patients bearing their troubles so bravely. Mm, I'm okay. sorry, Mind you, Bet, all the fortitude is not confined to the hospitals. Now, despite my migraine, I really feel I ought to have a little nourishment. Do you think you could try to manage while I just nibble something light? Bet. Yes, Fred. Right. Put the pint in there, love. He's not having any. Look. Will one of you two make his mind up? Is he having another pint or not? Of course I am. Oh, no, you're not. You said you was just having the one pint and then you was going to get them windows in Kitchener Street polished off before your dinner. Now, then, with your very words, now, just going to wet your whistle, you said. Well, I haven't wet it yet, have I? Ooh. You don't just wet it, do you? You blooming well drown it. Have you both finished? Look, you've the half in there. Is that all right? An half? All right, then. And I'll have the other half. Eh? She's smarter than you, Asta. Oh, you only just found that out. Hello, love. You'll have to ask Fred, oh. Oh, no. uh, Fred, give us a pint, will you? I've been gagging all morning. Hey, Fred, whatever possessed us to buy a flaming cow? Yeah. It weren't so daft, mate. I've been thinking about that. We've got a good one there. We'll do all right with him. Oh, what do you know about dogs? Hey, sure, mate. Hello. Hello. Fred, do you happen to have moved a tin of steak that I could have sworn was on the kitchen table last night? Somebody nobbled your late night nibblings, Mrs. Walker. Well, Fred. Well, as a matter of fact, I did move it, Mrs. Walker. Oh, good. <laughs> That's a tiny mystery song. Where'd you put it? I ate it for my breakfast. You ate a whole tin of steak for your breakfast. Mm. Well, I'm feeling just a bit peckish, you know, from last night. I didn't have a proper meal, so I, I just downed it. I, I hope you don't mind, Mrs. Walker. Oh, no, I don't mind. If that's what you wanted. No, I don't mind. I don't know how you could face it after what we shifted last night. You ate a whole tin of steak for your breakfast. Did I, Alice? Like I give it that dog dinner. Oh, I see. Hey, where have you put him? He's down in cellar. You are? I thought you said you were going to shift him. I don't go to that cellar, Ed Alf. Every time I go there, Annie Walker springs out of the woodwork. It's been nerve wracking here all morning, Alf. Nerve wracking. Why the heck you're making heavy weather of that? I'm not my best this morning, Mr. Furcliffe. Oh, come here, let me do it. What were you drinking last night? Wood alcohol. Hey, how was your night out at Dogs with Alf and Fred? Oh, it was great. It must have been. I wouldn't be feeling like death warmed up this morning. You won a few bob then, did you? I've got a feeling we all won a few quid. The only trouble is, I didn't have it on me when I woke up this morning, so I don't know. Unless I give it to Alf to look after for me or something. Yeah, or some bird wheedled it out of you, hey? Has been known to happen to innocent young chaps, hasn't it, Len? I have heard such tales. I don't remember no birds. I remember this little Irish fella, though. He had a greyhound. He took us to this strange club he knew for a late taste. He was trying to flog us his greyhound. 
It's all right for you young bachelors, you know. It sounds like a really good meat. Oh, it were. It feels terrible. What you want meat is a hair of the dog. Seldom fails. Yeah, two hairs. Never fails. Could go pie and all. Couldn't face me breakfast this morning. Now, really, didn't put me any butties up. Talking about me, Terry? No. You were. I heard my name mentioned. Poor is it? He was saying that your lilting voice makes it a pleasure for him to wake up every morning, darling. He's always singing your praises, you know. Oh, yeah. I've come to borrowing for half an hour if it's all the same to you. You can have him all flaming day for all the good he's been to us this morning. I'm not surprised. Coming home in the middle of the night, tiddled. Coming home what? Tiddled. And don't deny it. I'm not going to deny it. I thought I were a lot worse than that. Anyway, I want you looking after it shop while I go out on business. I thought you were looking a bit old dolled up. Don't miss a cheeky. I'm going to see my solicitor, as a matter of fact. Come on. We were just going at Rovers for a pie and a pint, weren't we, Len? The Rovers will be there when you get back. Just remember, a shut shop pays no wages. Let's have you. See ya. Track hey, Frank, give us another pint, will you? Yeah. Have one yourself. Oh, I think I will. Well, I think I'm back. I'm starting to pull round now. Now, if we just get rid of the uh, you-know-what from the you-know-where before you-know-who finds it, we'll have cracked it. Where do you reckon's a good place? Well, I'd love to have it. That's it settled, then? Yeah, I can't, though, can I? I mean, I'm working all day. No, it'll have to be Terry Bradshaw. I mean, they've got that yard at the back, and there's really there to keep an eye on him. Well, that's it, you see. The very highly strung dogs in our grounds. Pal of mine had one. Used to pine for him every time he went to work. It's the only reason he got married, just to give the dog a bit of company. Yeah, fuck it. Yes, I rather fancy a glass of my specialty. I think there's a bottle in the cellar. Well, I'll go if you like, Mrs Walker. We've gone quiet now. No, I'm sorry. I don't trouble. I'll do it. Hey, Fred, oh, tell her. Uh, Mrs. Walker. Oh, that's done it. Why didn't you tell me? I did tell you. Look, I think I'd better get back to work anyway. Hey, look, hang on here. It's as much your dog as it is mine. Yeah, but I... Oh, Mrs. Walker. Oh, look really what I've well. found in the cellar. Come along. Oh, oh, oh it's uh, around. Like it. I know. Probably what kept me awake all last night. The how it got in my cellar, I cannot imagine. Well, I swear it's not come past me since we owned. I wonder if one at door Draymond left trap up. What do you reckon, Fred? Oh, it's theoretically a possibility. Well, I'll have a word with them. They ought to be more oh, careful. Come on, boy. Hey, don't do that. You try stopping it. Off you go. Find your master. You know, in the licensed trade, sooner or later you lose your capacity for surprise. I'll just go down and see if it's cleared. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a hand. <coughs> Where is he? It's gone. Well, I can see that. That's flipping marvellous, isn't it? Tell you what, though, Alf. It just shows it must have a fine turn of speed, that dog. Oh, well, that is a great consolation, that is. You realise it's 30 quid's worth of armour that's gone whizzing off at high speed? Fred's folly. <laughs> Seventy, eighty, ninety, and tens a pound. Thank you. Hello. Oh, that didn't take long, did it? Been busy? Uh, right, I'm off then. Well, I was about to quit, thank you. Your family I don't need a thank you. Anyway, where are you rushing off to? Just laying away off have a drink or something to I eat. could <laughs> make you a sandwich. I've plenty of corned beef. I don't know. You spend all your working life with them two. I can't think what you want to spend your dinner hour with them for. Anyway, do you not want to know where I've been? It's a do it shop. Oh, big deal. See you later. We're going to be an off license and don't drink too much. Hmm. I don't know. It's no interest in business, that one. I don't know what I'm struggling for. Hello. Are you Mr. Mr. Bradshaw? That's me. Who are you? Mr. Fairclough said I could have all this wood for my bonfire. You're collecting bummy wood already. You're a bit early, aren't you? Aye. Oh, and he said to give you a message. What was it? Uh, oh, him and Mr. Langton, yeah. they've gone on ahead. Oh, right. Yeah, you can take your pick out of that lot. So? We've lost it. Annie Walker stuck it out at Rovers. We've looked all over. Nothing. It vanished off the face of the earth. Puzzler. Hang on a minute. Do you mind telling me what you're on about? Fred's folly. That dog, that greyhound, one we bought last night. You mean What's what? the matter with you? We lashed out all our money on a flaming greyhound. So that's where money went blooming out. We must have been paralytic. No, to its heart, it's a very valuable dog. 30 quid. Any road, we've lost it. Well, I haven't lost it. I didn't even know we had a dog to lose. Well, that's a stupid thing to say. Who are you calling stupid? You lost dog. Argu Look, standing round here, arguing the toss isn't going to find that dog. Now, if you want your share of it, you better come and help us to find it. Now, come on. Right. I've had no dinner. Oh, well. 
Uh, is Ray in? Rovers, I think. Oh, I must have missed him. Are you going there? No, I'm going looking for a greyhound. Oh, ask a silly question. Hello, what are you up to? Collecting wood, miss. Me bonfire, miss. Uh, don't keep calling me miss. I'm not your teacher. It could be embarrassing in my condition. Hey, miss? Forget it. Hey, is it all right if I borrow that pram to take me wood home? What pram? Oh, that pram. Yeah, I suppose it's all right. Matter of fact, you may as well keep it. I don't think it's any use to us. Thanks, miss. Smashing. Come on, Fred's folly. Come on, boy. It's Dad shouting that. I'll not answer to a daft name like Fred's folly. Come on, Fred. Have another name like Rover or something. Come on, Fred, boy. Come on, boy. The fuck will think we've got crackers talking like that? You know, we're wasting his time. I've been saying that for the last ten minutes. No, I mean, we're wasting vampire all sticking together. We ought to be looking separately. Look, I'll go down Gas Street and see if he's gone near the abattoir. I mean, happen to smell of meat, we'll take him that way. I missed me brekker this morning, you know, and I still haven't had me dinner. Yeah, Fred, you, you go down, um, Jubilee Terrace and have a look round there. Fair enough. Yeah, and you go down Rosamond Street and then along Canal Street, we'll see you in, near the canal, you know, oh. near the Red Wreck. All right, but listen, I can't remember out about what happened last night. I'm not sure I recognise this blooming dog, even if I see it. How many greyhounds do you think there are knocking about here, Ted? Don't talk so flaming wet. Who are you calling hey, wet, hey, yo? Hey, 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 hey. Oh, you two, there's plenty of time for argy-bargy afterward. Just think on, there's 30 quids worth of our money roaming around loose. That's £7.10 a leg. So get cracking. Oh, hello, hello. Oh, what's all this then? It's self-explanatory, Mrs Ogden. You only have to read it. Hi, Amy Bradshaw, of Coronation Reserve. Apply to the licensing sessions to be out. Sale of intoxicating liquor. Hey, you're putting in for that off-licence. All's our first time, Mrs Ogden. I'll be 53 pence off, please. <clears throat> what can I get you, Mrs Ogden? Eh? Oh, eh, uh, yeah. Um, well, I, I think I've left my oven on, Chuck. I I'll pop back. Do you know, there's half a page of jobs here and not one of them any good for me. I mean, any good for them, come to that. Situation's vacant, is right. You're not in the dough queue yet. And I have a feeling that you won't finish on Saturday. Oh, I can't see it, Elsie. You're wrong this time. I wasn't wrong when I told you I wish you wouldn't be in this morning, was I? Yeah, but this is different. She'll not back down about sacking me. Who's talking about backing down? That sort don't back down. They extricate themselves. They disengage themselves. They think of number one and pretend they're doing you a favour. I tell you something, if she does give you a job, and I think she will, she won't be doing it for your sake, she'll be doing it for hers. Hello, Elsie Hart. Oh, hello, Mrs Matthews. Yes, as a, as a matter of fact, she's here. Would you like a word with... Oh, I see. Yes. Well, uh... Shall I tell her that, then? Yes. Yes, I see. I will. Goodbye, Mrs Matthews. Well, what did she say? What did your Auntie Elsie tell you, then? I'm not fired. On due consideration, we feel that Gail's inexperience deserves one more chance. You've got your job back, kid. <laughs> I'll see you, wonderful. <laughs> Aye, this time. <laughs> Oh, bad. I think we're over the hump, as they say. Yes, I thought you were looking brighter. I don't mean that, no. We're over the peak of the lunchtime rush. I think we've done remarkably well, considering everything. Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> Unfortunately, my migraine's fading. Only those who've had it, you know, can comprehend it. Interestingly enough, do you know that some of the most eminent people in history have suffered from it? It must be a consolation to you. It is. Mrs Walker, have you got a minute? Will you serve Mrs. Ogden bed? Oh, well, no, I'm not here for drinking purposes. I'm here for warning purposes. Warning? Warning who, Mrs. The Ogden? The minute I seen it, I said to myself, what a blow for Mrs. Walker, I said. And what exactly have you seen, Mrs. Ogden? Oh, you've not heard that? No, I thought you wouldn't have. They say news travels fast, but it's not always true, you know. And in this case, it's not as always had far to come, neither. Only down the street. Mrs Ogden, would you kindly come to the point, if there is one, instead of this interminable beating about the bush? Well, I was trying to break it to you, gentle. Sacrini Bradshaw, she's pulling for an off licence. She has threatened that before, Mrs Ogden. Oh, she's done it. Applications up on her front door, bald as brass. Irene Bradshaw, etc., etc., for the sale of intoxicating liquor. Mm. Intoxicating liquors. It's funny, isn't it? You don't think of um, a light bottle as uh, intoxicated liquors, do you? Because <laughs> that's what I normally drink, you know, a light bottle. Oh, I'm afraid my migraine's coming on again. I should just have to go and lie down quietly in a darkened room. 
Thank you very much, Hilda. You just got me mugs job coping on me own again. Well, you can't blame me. If Annie Walker wants to have a funny turn, she'll have a funny turn. Go on, give us a light bottle. Some folk would have stood me that, you know, for being helpful, but not here. Oh, no. And I tell you, if I don't get a bit of civility, I shall have to start getting my intoxicated supplies at the corner shop. That's exactly what Mrs. Walker's worried about, you know. Oh, well, she just have to get used to it then, won't she? She won't, you know. I mean, she might be taking this lying down now, but that won't last. Hello, love. Hello, love. What are you having? Um, fizzy orange, please. Hey, is Terry down the yard, look? He was, but he went off with Alf and Fred. Some have about seen a man about a dog. Oh, and there was a little lad there collecting wood for a bonfire. He said you'd give him go ahead. Yeah, well, I'll plot to up and saw him off. Oh, and I'll let him have that uh, beat-up old pram to take his wood home in. You what? I'll let him take his wood home in that decrepit old pram. That was for baby I'm doing it up. You must be joking. That old wreck. It's not an old wreck. I'm just stripping it down, that's all. Oh. Did not know that, pram. You won't know that... She's given it away. I paid a fiver for that. Well, you crackers, Langton. For a start, I'm not carting my baby about in an old wreck like that. And for another thing, you've no right throwing money away on rubbish. It's you who wants to throw money away with your daft ideas about expensive prams. Look, let's get this straight. My baby is not going around in anything second hand. I'll have that pram as good as new when I've done it. I'm going to get it back. Look, you're wasting your time because I'm not having it. Look, you don't even know where that kid lives, do you? No, but I'll find him. Oh, you. Oi, while you're looking, find flaming Fred G for me. Any luck? <laughs> Not a sausage. Not round at Knacker's yard. Nothing. Well, we'll just have to keep on looking. He's a very valuable dog, that. In case you two have forgotten when we get him trained and racing, we'll make a lot of money out of him. You'll see. When we find him. If we find him. I've got a feeling something terrible's happened to that dog. I wouldn't be surprised if it'd been hit with a car or something. I wouldn't be surprised if it's at the bottom of that canal now as we're sitting here. Will you give over? Greyhounds are clever. Fast. Wherever he is, he'll be in one piece. Ah, but where the hell is he? Well, somebody could have... That's what's happened. Somebody's taken him in. Aye. Somebody's got him. Aye, but who? Anything else, Mr Tatlock? No. Yeah. I want a tin of that dog meat. I beg your pardon? I want a tin of that dog meat. I've seen it advertised on telly and it, it doesn't sound so bad. This luncheon meat's very nice, Mr Tatlock, and it's very reasonably priced for what it is. Oh, well, I don't want any luncheon meat. I just want that tin of dog meat. Well, if you insist. Are you a bit hard up, Mr Tatlock? I mean, are you finding it a bit hard to No. Make the... Just mind your own business. Sorry I spoke. Hey, look, Terry. Not a smell. You? Yeah. They're miles away now, you know. Flaming Graham. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I better get off to work. I'm going to be late otherwise. I'm late already. Hey, shall we have another scan around dinner time? Oh. Well, do you think there's any point? I don't. It's gone, hasn't it? Look, are you sure you went down Lower Bank this morning? I went down there at half seven. Well, you don't seem too enthusiastic about finding I'm just stock. facing facts, Alf. <laughs> How much is that dog in the window? And you can wine. shut up and all. More, gents. Why don't you try blood down? No, on second thought, she might lose that and all. <laughs> Everybody's a comedian. Look, we'll have one last try at dinner time. All right, Fred. Right. right. He'll be miles away. There's a good dog. Enjoyed that walk, did you? <laughs> did me a world of good. Well, you want some more, eh? Well, you've got a good appetite, you out. I don't know where they, you put it. You're only about as far through as a railway ticket. Go on now, that's it. There's a good dog. It's too late to sharpen your sword when the drum beats into battle. I'm not sharpening my sword. I'm going to work. Exactly. Half an hour late. What's half an hour? You'd soon know if I were your boss, my lad. Oh, no danger. Putting that daft dog before you work. I'm sorry, Mrs. Ogden, it's just a little family altercation. Oh, yeah, we all have them, sure. Some more than others. <laughs> Anything else, Mrs. Ogden? No, that's all for the moment, thank you. Uh, you couldn't see your way, could you? Huh? It's my petition in favour of an off-licence. It'll help me when I get to court. Oh, do you know, I never noticed what with the... <laughs> oh, you've got quite a few names already, haven't you? Yes, I've not done badly to say it's only been there a day. Well, less, really. I only put it there yesterday at dinner time. Oh, I see Dolly Wall, but now to Preston Street signed it. 
didn't know she could write, she couldn't when she left school. <laughs> She's too lally, you know. Oh, never been the same since she got frightened by a yank one night in the blackout, so they say. Did he? Well, she reckons he did. Air Ed Warden found her running down Bessie Street screaming, but I reckon she had hysterics because he didn't. <laughs> Still they all help. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm sure. Mm. Will you not? Well, I'm in a funny position, aren't I? Are you? Well, I mean, we're working at the Rovers. Oh, don't think I'm against you having a licence to sell intoxicates here. Oh, no, no, I'm all for it. Well, I mean, what do I do if I've got friends in of an afternoon and we uh, we fancy a drop of sherry with the Madeira sometime? It's very nice with a bit of cake, is sherry, you know. Is it? Oh, yes. Mm. Well, I couldn't get one at the Rovers, could I? Because they'd be shut. And any road, I reckon a bit of competition would do Annie Walker good, wake her up a bit. Still, you do see me position. I thought that's what you were going to explain. Well, I mean, working for her, I can't very well support the opposition now, can I? If she was to find out, it'd be the chop for me quick as lightning. Oh, she can be a very ruthless woman, can Annie Walker, you know. Oh, yes, I, I forgot. I'm, I'm sorry I asked you. Mm. Still, it is only names you want, isn't it? I mean, for the numbers, like. It don't matter who writes what. Oh, I, I think they have to be genuine, genuine names. Oh, this is genuine, all right, Chuck. In fact, I think she's more genuine than I am. I'm in South Africa, and that's the fact. Right, to our love. Hello, Hello Alden. How's the infirmary? Still going strong. Oh, just as well, eh? For them what want someone taken away in hurry. <laughs> you wouldn't know if there was somebody by the name of Hilda Crabtree, would you? Oh, look, that's uh, Mrs Ogden's maiden name, Crabtree. She's not as daft as she looks, is she? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm a bit late, Mrs Walker. Matter of minutes, but uh, I got detained in the corner shop by Rainy Bradshaw. Not a matter of minutes, it's a matter of half an hour. Yeah, 30 minutes, like I said. She wanted me to sign her petition. What petition? Petition for the off-licence. Wanted me to sign it. What, I said. And me all but Mrs Walker's right hand, I said. Ooh, not on your Nelly, I said. Be like trees and... I'll make a start on the ladies, eh? Means business, our Irene, don't she? A petition, indeed. Anybody would think she was trying to save an innocent man from the gallows instead of promoting Tuppence Hapney off licence. They can be effective, though, petitions, can't they? I doubt it. A long list of Tom, Dicks and Harris, half of which don't even know what they're signing for. What possible effect could that have on the court of law compared with the facts, every single one of which will support my objection? There is no local need for an off licence. I have given an adequate service service for more than 30 years. Her premises are in the and same Mrs. Walker street. says she gets a lot of names. Say hundreds, all saying they want an off-licence. Surely that'll make them sit up in court. I'm going to have a word with my solicitor. And Mrs. Walker, why don't you start your own petition? I mean, we get a lot more customers than she does. Not quite the same class of customers, mind you. Hey, Fit. Sorry, mate, I can't get away. Mrs. Walker's got some on. I've got to hold 40 here. Oh, well, where's young Terry? Search me. Oh, what a carry on. You better give us a pint. All right, old. Well, I've been better, Albert. Oh, well, I've got no grumbles at the minute. It must be this nice song we've had. Mm. It's very nice to be this on you, know, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, see, same when you're at trenches, you know. No matter how low you are or, or how scared, the minute the sun comes out, you feel better somehow. You, you can't beat a bit of warmth. No. No, it's like I've always said about warm countries. They don't need as high wages as we do. I mean, it doesn't cost them as much to live. They've, they've no eating to worry about. They don't need as much grub. Hmm, you've got a point there. Hey, you never guess what I've got at all. <sighs> Probably not, Albert. Right, well, I'll, I'll tell oh, you. Give us three pints, Bet, and Oggy's praying. I'll do it. Hey, how are you paying, Stan? Oh, wouldn't I mean, have another stride down the street? They're around the corner, gone the flying horse. So. Why do you lot say I don't stand me corner? I'm always getting me hand down. It's because you're not as young as you used to be, Stanley. I mean, five years ago, you'd have been around that corner like a shot. I'm going to reckon how much I spend on you lot. Wouldn't pay the rent of a dog kennel, Stanley. Take yeah. my word for it. Here's another one with his face and his shoe tops. See what happens if you bark at him. <laughs> oh, get lost. <laughs> Couldn't be better. So many friends to give us a good send-off. What's that, Annie, love? A petition in support of my objection to Miss Bradshaw's proposed off-licence. You will sign it, won't you? As one of the cornerstones of these premises. You two, Ray? Can cornerstones, Ray? <laughs> of course I'll sign it, love. Anything that doesn't cost me money. Ah, oh, that's a fact. What's that, Mr. Ogden? He'd sign anything. He signed the corner shop one. Thank you, Len, for your loyalty. 
<laughs> With friends like Hoggy, who needs enemies? God, something like Don't it. take the mickey out of me. I've got me pride. <laughs> hey, did you hear that? Hoggy's got his pride. I always thought it was his stomach. Oh, uh, about to. Oh, hey, I don't last better late than never. I got stuck at work. Look, Freddie, you sure you can't come? Hang on a minute. I'll have to see Mrs. Walker so as I get a chance. Here. Look, I still think it's a waste of time looking for a flipping dog. I think we should report it to police or something like that. What dog? Look, they're not going to look for a lost dog. Have you seen the crime figures lately? Yeah, what dog? What about the RSPCA, then? No, <laughs> no. I think our best bet is to go have another good look round. Oh, bloody but it is worth a few quid, Terry, it now tells. Yeah, what dog are you on about? It's a greyhound we've lost. We oh. bought it last night at the track, Terry and Fred and me. What, uh, what colour is it? Well, I don't... Sort of a mucky white. Ah. And, uh, and it's valuable, you say? It is to us. Well, have you thought about uh, putting it in paper and offering a reward? Good idea, Mr Tatlock. I was just going to suggest that myself. Good idea to save us legs. Mine, any road. Yeah, well, it might work as a well. vote. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, that, Albert. Ta-ta. Do you uh, want another drink? I don't mind. Give him a rum, will you, love? And me a pint. <laughs> oh, blast and set fire to it. I never could do cheese on toast. Flaming toast burns before that cheese melts. Yeah, it's one of the facts of life, that. Like never oh. getting the price you thought for a second-hand car. Since when did you sell a second-hand car? Not me. My dad is always selling second-hand cars. No, I tell a lie. Third and fourth hand cars. He reckons he's winning, but he started with a 1974 Cabri and now he's got a 1970 Victor, so how's he winning? Mm. Speaking of your father... Oh, I'll see Nor again. Well, it's better coming from you than him reading it in the papers, isn't it? It might not be in the paper. Oh, it will. Divorces always do. They make popular reading, you know, better than funerals. Yeah. Well, I'll take a chance on it not getting in the paper. Anything rather than tell me, Dad. He'll go up the wall. His little girl cited as co-respondent. He had a minor heart attack when I started wearing eyeshadow. Why did fathers always expect their daughters to be such little angels? Yeah. Oh, the sons, such little devils. Yeah. No idea. Because we're not, are we? Angels, I mean. No, when I tell you something else, you're not either a cook. I don't think you've even boiled an egg since you've been here. No, I'll admit it, cooking's not my strong point. Our domestic science teacher at school used to say, my toad in the hole had the consistency of a pyramid. Mm. And so is this cheese on toast. Here, get that in your gob and watch your molars. Anyone here at all? Now, what does he want? Come on in, Albert. You, uh, don't happen to have such a thing as a bit of thick string. How thick? Fairly thick. Have a look in that drawer. Thank you. What do you want thick string for, Albert? Ah, uh, never you mind. You're not thinking of doing yourself in, are you? No, no, I've got too much to live for. No, th th this will be all right. Well, take it then. Right, thank you. Um, you wouldn't like a piece of cheese on toast, would you? No, oh, thanks, sir. I don't like the look of it. <laughs> Good afternoon. Hello. Uh, I wondered, uh, do you by any chance sell wine by the glass? Wine by the glass? Yes, any kind, really. Red, white, rosé. Oh, dear, you know, you really have caught me napping. Yesterday, last night even, I could have obliged, but they have simply drunk me out, not a drop in the place. Some on order, of course, but that's hardly any good to you. No. I wonder, uh, might I suggest uh, a glass of cider? Not quite vino, of course, but very refreshing. No, oh, thanks. Uh, I'll half half a bitter, please. Very good. Pardon? My better. Ah, oh, that'll do. Lost. Valuable ground. Timid disposition. Last seen in Coronation Street area. Reward. I don't think we should say valuable, Alfie. Well, if somebody finds it and they know it's valuable, they might keep it or try and flog it. Well, if they do find it, they'll expect a big reward. Ah, yeah. oh, right. I'll take valuable out then. Yeah. It isn't anyway. Well, he is. He might be another Mick the Miller in. <laughs> I bet you live from one pool's coop to the next, don't you, Fred? I do, I. Two or three quid a week. Yeah, I thought so. Well, who's going to take it round to Gazette's office then? Me. Better get moving then. I'm late again, Mr. Furkle will give me what for. Hey, is it this you're looking for? Where'd you find him? Hot red rick. I've been there umpteen times. When? Well, about uh, about ten minutes since. You've got to look at the devil, Mr. Tyler. Hey, hang on a minute. You've had him all the time, haven't you? All that time when you were telling us to put an advert in the paper offering a reward. Prove it. You old. <sighs> bye bye. Said our love. You've not seen him in here before. Isn't that the dog I found in my cellar? Hey, I do believe it is, Mrs. Walker. 
Three quid. Ten percent of his value, and that's all you're getting. Well, it won't cover the cost of dogging. What, in ten minutes? Come off it, Albert. Not even if it was a St. Bernard. Alf, would you kindly get that dog out of here? Now, as you know, I put it out myself once. Will do, Annie. Where are you going to take it? I'll keep him at home, won't I? Well, he's going to be safe. Come on, Fred. Come on, I'll take it. Go on, stick him in the car. Miss Bradshaw? Yes, that's me. Um, I'm from Robson and Renshaw, Simon Lodge, Article Clerk. Uh, Mr. Robson asked me to call and see if you've thought of anything. Well, anything else that might help your application. How's the petition going? Well, I'm not doing too badly. There's about 20 names already. Uh, no, I don't think there's anything else. Oh. Uh, I've just been in the Rovers. <laughs> oh, yes. Did you meet the enemy? I think I must have done. An elderly, posh sort of lady. <laughs> I hope she didn't hear you call her elderly. No, she couldn't have done. You still got your head on your shoulders. I did some detective work. Oh, yeah? Asked for a glass of wine, not a drop in the place. She never has. She said she was temporarily out of stock. She's a liar. Yes, well, uh, from the look of it, I'd say it was chiefly a beer pub. Yes, it is. Mr. Robson will probably make a big point of that in court. Well, he'll only be telling the truth. Right. Well, uh, the more names, the merrier. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. You're in Rovers, him. Mm, there's the clerk from the solicitor's office. Do you know? I'm beginning to feel very confident about this application. We've got Fred's folly back. Have you? Well, don't sound so chuffed about it. Do you know, I think people who own a greyhound, or even part of one, shouldn't be living on licensed premises, which these are going to be. It's a form of gambling, and that's not allowed. Don't talk so flipping wet. I'm going to work. I've told you, you'll get your marching orders if it causes any trouble. See if you like living in a kennel with it. Hello. Hello. There. I thought you didn't approve. I thought I didn't, but I've been giving it some thought. All dinner time, in fact. What difference is one more off-licence going to make, for goodness sake? All this opposition to drink and gambling and sex and such like it, it's just a smoke screen. Why don't we concentrate on the real evils like greed and cruelty, terrorism? <laughs> the list's endless. You're off-licence, Rini hardly amounts to one grain of sand in the great desert of evil. Mm. Very confident indeed. Come on, Fred. There's a good boy. Go on, this way. Come on, Fred. Come on. Whoa! Fred! Oh, blood and sand. Mrs. Hard, I felt sure as one of my oldest, most valued customers, you would want to add your weight to my little effort to teach Miss Bradshaw a lesson. Mm, but less of the oldest, if you don't you mind. You know, when you come to think of it, she really has got a nerve, hasn't she? Hardly been here a minute. Already she's threatening an old established business like mine. First time I saw her, I said to myself, that woman is the pushy sort. You did say it, son, didn't you, dear? Yes, I suppose so. I don't suppose there's out I can't get at the Rovers that I can get in the off-licence. Except it's cheap, eh? What about you, Gail? Oh, I don't think I should be signing petitions on the consumption of alcohol, Mrs Walker. Me being so young and innocent. I mean, cross your heart and hope to die. Do you really approve of me being in the Rovers, even though I am old enough? You come in often enough, like most of your contemporaries. Uh, uh, Gail, uh, answer that door, will you, love? Thank you very much, Mrs. Hart. Uh, do you think you really will stop her? Of course I shall. The Rovers is the four knocks of these parts. It's unassailable. Someone else with a petition, Elsie? Mrs. Walker? Miss Bradshaw? Too late, I'm afraid. You have heard of the early bird. Thank you for your support, Mrs. Hart. Am I really too late? Gail, I'm neutral. Can you see a big black cloud over my head? Oh, hello. You with it? Come on. You'd better come in then. Mix me, did you? I thought you would. Come on. Here. Have a bit of fried bread. Don't you want it? Well, I don't know, and I thought you and me were mates. I don't know. 
One minute you're yelling at me for being late, next minute you're buying me pints in working hours. Look, I don't mind you skiving in here. That's completely acceptable. What I object to is you going chasing flea-bitten greyhounds all over the place when you're supposed to be working. <laughs> yeah, well, I won't be doing any more chasing, will I? Hey, Stan, you're going to buy a share in a greyhound going very cheap. I wouldn't mind a share in a racehorse, you know, sport of kings. <laughs> yeah, I've always fancied that, Stan. Me too. Why don't we all club up and buy one? I can just see myself in owner's ring at Ascot. There's no point. Why not? Because you can't buy a flaming racehorse for 50p. That's about all you lot have got between you. Well, you're worth the bomb. You must be. All them pies you've got your I'm as poor as a two bob, watch me. Get out, you liar. Fire, you lot still here? Ooh, I reckon somebody sprinkled you with a watering can, you tech root. Listen, who's talking? You know what his favourite song is, don't you? The building a bar five hmm. miles long. Fifty miles long, actually. Well, did you get it? What? That pram you're going to nick back off that poor kid. Ah, oh, forget it. What happened? Nothing happened, forget it. What happened? Wouldn't the kid let you have it back? Did he threaten to thump you, then? <laughs> oh, nay. Ray? They're into pram anymore. Why not? Because he turned it into a trolley, a summer <laughs> sledge. <laughs> Best end for it. <laughs> I just see myself pushing that pram. Oh, come on, I'll walk you back to work. I'll even link arms with you. Oh. Hey, I better be up and all. Hey, come on, don't make a meal of it. <laughs> Give us a chance and we'll just got it in. Down you. <laughs> hey, do you want my autograph? I thought I had it. So does Annie Walker. <laughs> Is it right? Let's sign both. Yeah, and one or two more, I'll bet. Well, I'm going to sign it. I don't believe in petitions. Let the world do what it's like is my motto. And what if they were pulling the rovers down, Stan? Wouldn't you sign a petition to stop them? They'd build a bigger pub, wouldn't they? Pub land is sacred. Like churches, you know. Gee, I didn't know that, did you? No, I didn't. Still stands an expert on these matters, aren't you, Lord? Uh, oh, he is, I know. Well, Rini, what do you think your chances are of getting a licence? Do you know? I'll tell you when I've had a lager. I don't reckon much to service in this pub, do you, Terry? Any other criticisms of this establishment, Miss Bradshaw? <laughs> Not a van, Mrs. Walker, no. <laughs> I'm pleased to hear it. Uh, Largy, you said. That's right, love. Hey, we just had a fella in shop that had a complaint to make about this place, Mrs. Walker. Indeed. And who was that? Oh, he was from Reenie's solicitors. He says uh, he'd come in for a glass of wine and he didn't have any. He must have been that young chap I said I'd not seen before, Mrs. Walker. I know precisely who the person was, Ben. So, you're employing spies, are you, Miss Bradshaw? Spies? Yes, spies. Sending people into this house to snoop. What are they if they're not spies? Are there no dirty tricks you won't stoop to to get your own way? I never sent anybody in. I rather think you did. And if you're sending strangers in here to do your dirty work for you, I'd really rather you didn't come in yourself. Miss Bradshaw won't be requiring that bet. Well, I don't think you can ban her, Mrs. Walker, unless you've got a good reason. Don't you? I could ban you if I wanted, Mr. Bradshaw. Now, if you would kindly leave. If she goes, I'm going to. It's all right. There's no need for you to get involved, Terry. Just one thing, Mrs. Walker. You try coming in my shop. You've just declared total war, Mrs. Walker. I'll say. And about time too. More drama next on Granada Plus as the action centres on Mike, who's posted a letter with some distressing news. He's about to get the shock of his life when he discovers an addition to the Christmas present list. In